How's it going, everyone? My name is Chris from One More Game MTG, and we have an epic deck tech ahead of us today. We are heading into the pauper format, one of my most absolutely loved and cannot stop building decks around format. In this episode, we have Balmor, Battle Mage Captain. Can this Lord of Prowess lead us to the victory that we truly need? Let's find out on today's deck tech for Pauper Commander with One More Game MTG. Balmor Battle Mage Captain is the absolute Lord of Prowess. A 1-3 bird wizard for blue and a red with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, and gain trample until end of turn. This is the most epic way to spam the board when it comes to prowess triggers. There are so many options out there that basically just build and build and build. And now with our Lord giving everything trample in addition to that overall power buff, we can easily swarm the board, go wide, and just win with a single swing. For this deck tech, we're going to focus on a pauper-based strategy. Pauper is a great form that allows new players to build decks at a very casual yet sometimes competitive level without having to break the bank. This overall deck is roughly between anywhere from $25 to $30. We now have an is it based spell slinging deck with an overall go wide strategy for only sub $30. It's a great value. In this deck tech, we're going to break down certain parts of the deck, figure out what cards go in each position, and how we're going to win the game. So let's get right into that deck tech and see how well Balmor Battle Mage Captain does as an overall pauper based commander. First up is the ramp package. Honor an to tap for any mana or exile a tower card from her graveyard. Ornithopter of Paradise, a generic colored mana rock for its ultra creature. Goblin Electromancer, which is an instant sorcery cost, one less to cast, so it's a great spell option. Commander straight to tap for any color of your commander's identity and sacrificing to draw a card later on. Decanter of Endless Water, giving you no maximum hand size and any one mana of any color. Mindstone, it does add for colorless mana, but you also have the option to draw a card later in the game. Is it Signet? Guess what? It's one of the Signets that's great to include in any pauper base build. Arcane Signet, some of the cards that you need to be playing this card. And then Felwar Stone, a great two mana rock for any pauper build. Then the next up is the draw package. We want to be able to at least just consistently draw, 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 and get as many cards as possible when playing out Balmor. The more cards we draw, the more triggers off of Balmor we will receive and get deeper and deeper into, into the deck to get the exact cards we need to win. We have Merchant on the Vow with a Haggle ability, discarding a card and then drawing a card and getting the ability of a creature later on with the filter ability. Skyro possibility to scry two and draw a card with flashback. Opt, scry one and draw a card. Radical idea, draw a card with jumpstart, which is a great ability to have a secondary build on top of that. Thrill of possibility, discarding one card to draw two cards at instant speed. Behold the multiverse, scry two and draw two, but you also have the foretell ability. You can use this later on when you start to spam the board with more creatures. Expedite, giving entire creature haste, but also drawing a card. Faithless Looting, draw two, discard two with flashback two and a red. It's one of those cards that you just like, basically, if you have the option with red, you play this card. Preordain, scry two and draw two for a single blue. Big score three and a red for just a cast. You discard a card, but you get to draw two cards and create two treasures. So it basically is replacing itself. Brainstorm, draw three cards and put two back in the library of any order for a single blue. You can cast it at instant speed to get even more value. Reckless Impulse, one or the red. Exile the top two cards of your library. Until your next turn, you can play those cards. A great option if you're playing some, like, impulse strategy. So even if you can't play them right away, you have another turn. Serum Visions, draw a card and strike two. Frantic Search, two and a blue, draw two cards, then discard two cards. We get to untap three lands. And then consider, look at the top card of your library, put it into your graveyard, and then you draw a card. The more draw effects you get in this deck, the better. Because the deeper we get in the deck, the greater chance we have to win the game. Since Balmor is a prowess ability, why not have some more redundancy and just get even more abilities that are very similar to Balmor? Fire Urchin, one and a red for a 1-3 elemental trample. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, it gets plus 1 plus 0. Given trample on its own is already great, so doubling up on Balmor, double up the fun. Pyroceratops, a 2-3 elemental dinosaur with trample. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a counter on it. Not just simply a buff, you get a counter, which is an awesome ability. Sky Theater Strix, one in a blue for a 1-2 flying bird, gets the non-creature spell, plus a little buff right there. Spell Gorge of Weird, two in a red for a weird, which I know, weird saying weird. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a counter on it. Blood Water Entity, one blue red for a 2-2 elemental of prowess, but also when it enters the battlefield, you may put a target or instant sorcery card from your grave on top of your library. Great to have a little bit of recursion on that as well. Pyre Hound, three in a red for a 2-3 trample again. Whenever you cast instant sorcery, you put a counter on it. There's a lot of great redundancy with these counters, so we can start off with a 2-3 trample, but guess what? We can make a massive body in no time flat. 
Elusive Spellfist, one and a blue for a 1-3 human monk. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus 1, plus 0, oh, and it cannot be blocked. That is a phenomenal ability you, that you cannot disregard. Jeskai Sage, one and a blue for a 1-1 one, one prowess. When it dies, draw a card. Nothing like getting a little extra value when something goes away. Festival Crasher, one and a red for a 1-3. Whenever you cast a sorcery instant spell, it gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. We Dragonauts, one blue red for a 1-3 flyer. Same thing, when you cast instant sorcery, it gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh. Burning Prophet, 1 and a red, 1-3. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, get plus 1, plus 0, oh, but you also get to scry 1. That's a great ability to get some little top deck manipulation. And then the inspiration for everything, we have Kiln Fiend. 1 and a red for a 1-2. Whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus 3, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. That goes crazy powerful. Kiln Fiend is one of those cards where like you think out of nowhere, boom, you win the game. Pretty awesome. Now, since Balmor is going to give the entire team a buff, why not just spam the board with a bunch of tokens and just win from there? There's nothing wrong with going wide while you go tall at the same time. We have Satyr's Cunning, one red, create a 1-1 one, one red token, which creature cannot be blocked. But, guess what? It has the escape ability. Exile two cards, or you can recast it. Yeah, you can do that over and over again. Forbidden Friendship, one in a red creates two creatures. One's a dinosaur and one's a human. Goblin Wizardry, three in a red, create two 1-1 one, one goblins with prowess. That's even more prowess, even more value. Dragon Fodder, one in a red, create two goblins. Beetleback Chief, two red red for a 2-2. Two, two. Into the battlefield, create two goblins. Goblin Instigator, one in a red, where it creates a 1-1, one, one, but also creates a 1-1 one, one token on the battlefield additionally. Cranko's Command, one in a red, to create two 1-1 one, one goblins. And Hordling Outburst, one red red to create three 1-1 one, one red goblins. And then we have some Protection, Recursion, and Counters. For Protection, we have Mizium Skin for a single blue, giving a creature plus O plus 1 a Hexproof, but you can overload it for one and a blue. Shore up, a great new card from the set for a single blue target creature you control gets plus one plus one and hexproof and you untap it. Great defensive ability as well. For recursion, we have Arden Elementalist and a Chaomancer. Each costing four, when they enter the battlefield, you return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. For counters, we have Mana Leak, Foil, Counterspell, and Arcane Denial. All great counterspells for the proper format that basically need to go in any deck. Controlling the board state is something that's going to help you go to the overall victory in no time flat. Next up is just some more removal. In Is It, we have so many spell slinging options that getting some more removal, whether it's removing things from the board, exiling them, or bouncing them back to their hand, it's something you definitely want to consider when building out a deck. A braid to deal three damage to our creature or destroy an artifact. Sword Coast Serpent, which has on the front side, capsizing way for one and a blue to bounce a creature, but also on the back adventure side, five blue blue for a six six serpent dragon. And when you cast a non creature spell it cannot be blocked that's a great ability and then end the festivities a single red it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control it's literally a mini board wipe smash to dust one in a red choose one artifacts gone destroy a creature with defender or deal one damage to each creature your opponents control it, that's a one-sided weapon sometimes and then Resculpt, one in a blue for an exile target artifact or creature. Its controller gets a 4-4 four, four blue and red and magic token. Yeah, it's a little bit of a downside, but it's an exile effect. It's a great option. Now, since we're casting a bunch of spells, Balmor himself may just become a massive beater. So why not just add a back-end Voltron style? Artful Dodge, Seething Anger, Psychotic Fury, and Distortion Strike are great ways to make an unblockable creature or simply just buff it up and give it double strike and win with a single swing of that creature. Definitely things you do not want to forget about if you're playing out a prowess-based strategy. And then to round things out, we have a little bit of extra game wins. Dyna Charge, a single red target creature gets plus 2, plus 0, but you can overload it for 2 and a red. Thermal Alchemist, a 0, 3, 1 red for a defender, dealing 1 damage to each opponent when it's tapped. Whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, you untap it. So, in theory, you can get this off to go multiple times in a single turn. And then you have Kessig Flame Breather and Firebrand Archer. Both being one and a red, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. Because we're spell slinging, we want to be able to deal as much damage with our spells themselves on top of the creatures. So adding these additionally just basically make a greater value overall. And that's my deck tech of a quick take of Balmor Battle Mage Captain for the Pauper Commander format. I love this card, and it's really, really cool. I love the fact that this can be upscaled to even more powerful in a straight up full on commander game. But just basically on the purple format, for sub $30, we now have a full commander deck that is a prowess lord of all. Super soaked for this. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Chris from One More Game MTG. Remember to like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification for future videos because it does go a long way. Thank you very much and have a good one. And remember, One More Game is never enough. Peace.